Hey everyone, I am Dr. Morales and I have the pleasure of being here with Melanie True Hills, who is the founder of Stop AFib, which is a fantastic resource for patients living with atrial fibrillation. Melanie, thank you for being here, taking a few minutes out of your time today. I really Th appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Morales. Oh, thank you. I really Great appreciate it. <laughs> I wanted to take a few minutes just to kind of let people know out there sort of the story behind the creation of Stop AFib, the organization. Now, I've been through your website. I kind of know a little bit of your patient story, but how did your experience as an AFib patient lead to the desire or need to want to create this organization? Well, back in 2005, I had a procedure, and once I had been AFib-free for a while, I decided that somebody needed to do something to help other AFib patients get their lives back. And well, it might as well be me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started StopAFib.org. Mm -hmm. I wanted to help people who were living with this condition but didn't know what their options were mm -hmm. to understand what treatments were mm -hmm. for AFib. And that's how we got started. So we, we actually launched in April of 2007. Mm -hmm. And so we've been around for about uh, 12 years or so. So back in 2007, what was available for patients? Was there really not much out there back then? There wasn't a whole lot. And as I was looking at different procedures, I didn't find a whole lot of resources mm -hmm. to help me know more about the procedures. I'm a type A person. I'm going to dig in and yeah. find out all the details, yeah. do my homework. Yeah. And I didn't find a whole lot to help me with that. And that's why I decided that I needed to do something. And I had some technology background. Mm -hmm. I had been at Dell and Cisco, mm -hmm. wow. and even before that, had been at JCPenney mm -hmm. and what had led the creation of jcpenney.com and an internet and a supplier extranet. Mm -hmm. So I had the technology background, right. and so it just lent itself mm -hmm. as a patient and the tech background mm -hmm. to creating a website. And you could probably uh, relate or understand that proper education for patients who have AFib. Properly educated patients are going to get better treatment and better care at the, in the end result. And, you know, and being have, having that quality of education is extremely crucial. Yeah, absolutely. And AFib is not one of those conditions that a doctor can spend five minutes with you and you know everything. Exactly. It's much too complicated. And, in fact, you know, some of the experts have have learned from talking with me and having me speak at their conferences that maybe they need to do a new patient appointment as two appointments mm -hmm. and um, deal with the urgent things first, uh -huh. uh, such as stroke prevention and maybe, you know, rate of rhythm control, mm -hmm. and then have the patient go off, do some research, and come to our website and to other websites. So we have links to yes. lots of, of other resources for AFib patients as well, and then come back in a week or two better educated mm -hmm. and then have the conversation about what all the treatment yeah. options are and what plan there might be for managing that person's AFib. And that's an excellent point because it's very hard to go over all the things about why somebody could get AFib, mm -hmm. what are all the treatment options for somebody, mm -hmm. and in typical office visits. It's just almost impossible. Exactly. Exactly. So you told me you started back in 2007, but over the years, how has the organization changed and progressed? How are the changes yeah. in terms of offerings and resources that you have available for patients. Well, thank you for asking about that. We, yeah. we started out with the website, and yeah. then we saw the need for communication and support, mm -hmm. and yeah. so we created a blog where people could then make comments mm -hmm. and discuss things with each other, and that led us into creating a forum, and all that happened in 2008. And then we, I, in 2008, I went off to my first medical conference, and that was the light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, we have got to get a conference for patients mm -hmm. where we bring in those that are speaking at the, you know, at the medical conferences yeah. to speak for patients. Right, right. So how long have you been doing the conference for now? So we started in 2013. And so this will actually be our sixth year. Sixth year, okay. It will be in August, August 9th through 11th. Mm -hmm. It'll be in Dallas at the Fairmont Hotel. Mm -hmm. And um, anyone that's interested in knowing more about it, and we should have the faculty up in a few days, as well as we have the detailed agenda already. So anyone that's interested might want to go to Get In With Them. Dot com, or come to my website, stopafib.org, and there's a banner, and you can click on it and go directly to the conference. But we've done, uh, we did the patient conference. We do a lot of research with um, various academic centers, and 
leverage having the email newsletter and social media to help patients know about research opportunities that they can participate in. So it's we've, we've broadened out. We're global in scope. And we do a lot of work around the globe. And I have the privilege of speaking at medical conferences um, all around the globe to help doctors understand what it's like to be a patient living with HIV. And I must say, I'm a fan of your website. I subscribe to the emails as well. So I'm a little bit in tune to the, some of the things that you guys are doing and the resources that you have available to patients. And especially the research topic as well. You know, patients don't always get a chance to have some input into yeah. what research is being done in the condition that they have. Exactly. And we became part of what's called the Healthy Heart Alliance, which was focused on patient-powered research. Mm -hmm. And it was actually funded by PCORI, the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, mm -hmm. to do patient-centered research. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, the Healthy Heart Alliance had a patient-powered research summit where about 100 patients and researchers came together mm -hmm. to define research that patients wanted to right. see and one of those projects was to do more research into AFib triggers. Mm -hmm. And that ended up a work of patients and researchers working mm -hmm. together to define that project. Mm -hmm. We got it funded by PCORI, and it's actually now in the process of recruiting. We started out by, and we have, and the patients are involved in the advisory group for it. Mm -hmm. We started out by a survey asking patients what are their triggers. Mm -hmm if they have them, mm -hmm. and now we're actually recruiting mm -hmm. for patients to test their triggers. Mm -hmm. This is all patient-powered yeah. research yeah. that's driven by the need that was expressed by patients because we didn't see researchers doing this kind of yeah. research. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And so one more time, this patient education conference, when is it and where can people find information about it? It's August the 9th through the 11th. Mm -hmm. It'll be in Dallas mm -hmm. at the Fairmont Hotel and they can go to getinrhythm.com or to the stopafib.org website and click on the banner for the patient conference. Well, Melanie, I really appreciate you taking your few minutes to interview with me. Like I said, I'm a fan of your website. It's a fantastic educational resource for patients, and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time. Thank you so much for thank the you. opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>